Hi friends, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and country cook, Steve Hall here, back aboard the beautiful Miss Sheila houseboat, where we're cruising and cooking again today. I'm going to show you a recipe that is my favorite, crawfish pie. I got this recipe down in Bowbridge, Louisiana. We were playing the crawfish festival down there. 60,000 screaming Cajuns, all eating etouffee and crawfish tails and, and all kinds of yummy good stuff made out of crawfish meat. And I had a crawfish pie. I had to get the recipe, and I'm going to share it with you today. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with a half a cup of butter, which equals one quarter stick of butter. I've already melted that in my electric fry pan, so you can make this out at the hunting camp. Now we're going to add what they call in Louisiana the Holy Trinity. And what that is, it's celery, one cup, onions for this recipe, also one cup, and red bell pepper for this recipe, one cup. So that's easy to remember, one cup of each. And the reason they call it the Holy Trinity, they put it in almost everything down there. Celery, onions, and red bell pepper. And we're going to soften this up a little bit and cook this in our butter. We're going to run this on about medium-high heat and kind of soften this. If you want to check out where I work up and down the road, I do do a tour, tour show, Steve Hall and the Shotgun Red Band. Check us out at www.shotgunred.com and come see our show. That's what we were down, doing down there in Louisiana at that big crawfish cookout, doing a country show. Okay, that's kind of whipping itself up. What else we're going to use, of course, in this recipe is crawfish. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that before we get to putting it in there. You can buy this stuff anywhere. Uh, Walmart carries it. You can get it at Kroger stores. And this is the easiest way to use it is in these frozen packets, which is just the tail meat out of the little crawfish. Little crawfish in Iowa, they, they call them crawdaddies, but it has the, the veins taking them out, they're de-veined and they're all cleaned up. But get the ones that have the meat too, they're like the tail meat and the fat, them are the best. That carries all the flavor. This is a 12 ounce packet. We're going to use one pound today, so I've opened a couple to get my, my one pound of meat ready. But before we put the meat in, we're going to add to our holy trinity here that we got cooking in our pan, one half cup of heavy whipping cream. Oh, this is going to be so good. About three quarters of a cup of chopped up onions in there. About a quarter of a cup of minced garlic. I use minced garlic out of the hunting camp all the time. It's a lot easier than using the other regular garlic and doing all that stuff. Stir that in there and get that happening. We're going to add into this one half a cup of cream and mushroom soup. And I'll tell you, venison and cream and mushroom soup, I can eat tree bark with that stuff on it. You can prop it up on top of some noodles or some toast. Get that working in the pan. We're going to put this all in a pie and pop it in the oven here pretty soon. We're going to need one egg, and we only want the yolk, just the egg yolk, whipped up. We want to kind of stir this around in here so it doesn't turn into scrambled eggs, so it just kind of gets in the mixture. It gives it such rich flavor. We're going to use about three quarters of a cup of parsley flakes. This gives it such great color. I remember when we was whipping this up one day and the guy said, you ought to pour in a little bit of that, a little bit of that wine. And I said, man, let's give that a try, because I like Ziffendale wine and everything. And I had some here. I'm not sure where my Ziffendale wine went to. Here it is. Oh, okay. Thank you. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. The cap is off. You've been drinking this stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Miss Sheila, my first mate. I'm going to put in just about an eighth of a cup of white Ziffendale wine in there. I wish you could smell this because this stuff is so good right now. Then, to thicken it up, in our pie, we're going to put in about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. There's several different, several different brands out there in the market, but I'm just going to use regular breadcrumbs. Looks like I got two cups there, so we'll try to keep them cooking the cup in there too. Getting better. Now for our wonderful ingredient, crawfish tails. We got one pound of them here. These are just so, so dandy. And about every Cajun recipe has crawfish meat in it. 
We're going to let this simmer now for about five minutes just till it all kind of blends together and gets real hot. Then we're going to pour it in our pie crust. All right, we transferred this over to a bowl, make it a little easier to handle out of our frying pan. And this is a good time to taste test this. Give it a little sample. Mmm, that's so good. And you can bring the heat up before you put it in your pie. Now I like to use a couple of types of pepper. I use ground cayenne pepper. Only about an eighth of a teaspoon in there. Not a lot. And then a little bit. Hate to eat and talk at the same time, but this is so good. And we have some white ground pepper here. I just bought this at the store last night. So I didn't open this container up yet. But we'll do about the same thing with that. Put about an eighth of that in there. Let me get a clean spoon or a clean fork. Is anything to stir this up with? Let me work this pepper in here. And you don't have to get it real hot and spicy just because it's a Louisiana dish. But I like that little edge on there. Let me try this again here. Mm. To me, that's perfect. All right, let's transfer this into our pie. Get that in there. I'm going to eat this, so I'm going to use the same spoon. There we go. Just kind of fill it about level full. Now the rest of this stuff is so good, you can whip up some noodles, you can make some toast, put it on there. It is absolutely delicious. You can put it on rice, whatever. You don't even have to put it in a pie, but for today's recipe, the crawfish pie is what we're trying for. Now we're going to use our handy dandy little pie crust that I did in, a, in another recipe, and I fell in love with these. Like I said, I used to buy two of these pie crusts take one to pour the stuff in, take the other one, flatten it out and try to cut out the edges and make it fit. These pie crusts, by the way, you can find them in that same area that you find biscuits, where they got the biscuit dough. I couldn't find them. I kept looking in the in the pie crust section, but they're not there. They're over by the, by the biscuits. You bring them up to room temperature out of the refrigerator. And look at this. It is so easy to deal with. Aren't these dandy? I love these little pie crusts. They work just super. You just drape it right over there. Start to smash it along there on the edge. Kind of seal it up. I just break off the excess. And I might have said in one of the other shows that if you got any kids around, don't throw this pie crust away. Flatten it up. Put a little bit of sugar and cinnamon in there. Roll it over and pop it in the oven and bake it alongside your pie. Makes a nice little treat for somebody. But this is going to be really, really good. Crawfish pie. We got all our seasonings in there, all our goodies, our crawfish tails. Once you do it, they're going to have to find another freezer at Walmart to stock some more of these. Don't that look beautiful? What we're going to do now is we're going to put some little slits in the top of this. Just four little slits to keep this thing from ballooning up when you cook it in the oven on top. And this is the handy and dandiest thing. You've got to take some egg and just a little teeny bit of water or milk and egg wash the top of this crust. It turns out so golden brown. Well, you'll see in just a second here when I pop it in the oven. Then we go through our time lapse and bring you out the completed one. You'll see how golden brown it makes it. If you don't, it seems like it gets kind of real dark brown around the edges and never gets brown in the middle. But if you'll just paint it with that egg wash, just take one egg, that's yolk and all, whip it up, whisk it up in a little bowl with just a touch of water or a touch of milk. I always use milk, but they do egg wash with water. There we go. We're ready to go. We're going to pop this in the oven, 350 degrees. I cook everything at 350 degrees almost. At 350 until it's golden brown on top, and then we're ready to dish up our crawfish pie. I'll show you the finished product right now. There we have it, crawfish pie for the hunting camp. Never could decide on a color for the mitt there, so I got two different colored ones, but let's try this. Man, oh man, now we have let this set for about 15 minutes after it came out of the oven. Kind of thickens up just a little bit. Let's see how we turned out here. Oh, this is looking good already. Them crumbs help kind of put this all together. We'll see if we can't 
get a chunk out of here with all kinds of extra stuff falling everywhere. Oh, look at that. Look at me. Look at me. I'm doing good. There's the extra goodies. I steal a little bit out of Tim's slice. His slice is over here, so I stole a little bit of his, but that's all right. Awesome, awesome. We can live with that. Let's check it out. Crawfish pie from Louisiana Recipes back in about 1986. Oh, man. Mm. Hold on. Keep rolling. This is divine. Crawfish pie. Whip it up. Get some of those easy crust, easy roll-out crust toppings. Get you a pack of crawfish from over at Walmart. Get the rest of them goodies, throw it in. Go heavier light on the pepper. Bake it until it's golden brown with that egg wash. And you will have the most delicious treat out the hunting camp. Is it the best crawfish pie in the world? You cook it up and tell me, but if it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall saying, we'll see you next time. This is fabulous. Mm. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Cooking with Shotgun Red. If you enjoy our recipes, become a subscriber to our cooking channel. And you'll be the first to know when a new recipe is posted. We'll see you next time, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. This is Shotgun Red saying thanks a lot.